In the last video, we photographed perhaps the most beautiful deep sky object in the night sky. Today, we are going to look at the most iconic image since the dawn of astrophotography. Hello and welcome to the Astronominas channel. I am Fabio and today we are going to photograph the Horse Head Nebula. Few images are so iconic as the Horse Head Nebula. Cataloged as IC434, the nebula is located about 1500 light years away from the Earth, right next to the star Aunitec, Urzeta Orionis, which is one of the three stars in the Orion's belt, also known as the Three Marys. It is a dark nebula, formed mainly by interstellar dust, which blocks the light emitted by a hydrogen cloud. This cloud lies behind the nebula and is ionized by the star Sigma Orionis, making the silhouetted shape of the horse head even more striking. But the Horsehead Nebula is not the only one to circle the star Aunitac. Next to it, we can also observe the Flame Nebula. Cataloged as NGC 2024, it is another nebula formed by dust and gas, which blocks the passage of light emitted by ionized hydrogen, creating the impression of a burning flame. In addition to these two largest nebulae, there are also other smaller ones in the region, such as nebulae IC431, 432 and 45, and NGC 2023. The two nebulae have apparent magnitudes between 7 and 7.5 and can be photographed with DSLR cameras and lenses as long as a long integration time is achieved. But my goal is to get a good image of the region, with enough definition to be able to observe the details of the interstellar dust clouds. For this, I will again use the Sky Rover 60 Super ED and the ASI 183MC Pro, which offers the perfect framing for the composition. The Orion constellation will be in the best possible position to carry out the captures this weekend, reaching out its highest point, which is 62 degrees of altitude, at 11 pm. I will start capturing the images one hour before and end one hour after Aunitac passes the highest point, performing the meridional flip at exactly 11 pm, thus obtaining the best possible atmospheric quality. For this image, I'm going back to my default setting on the ASI 183MC Pro, which is 1200 second subframes, with camera again at 1500 and cooling at minus 10 degrees. I already mentioned in previous videos that exposures of 1200 seconds are more reliable, not only by the quality in the star shape, but also because they minimize the satellite risks which are very common at this altitude. In addition, summer is always the season with greater cloudiness and cloud circulation. Shorter subframes minimize the final amount of discards for both reasons. Despite the weather being clear and with apparent good transparency on Friday night, all images were marked by halos around the bright stars, probably due to the high relative humidity of the air and the circulation of thin clouds in the highest layers of the atmosphere. Saturday night was perfectly clear, 
which allowed me to put the image acquisition plan into practice. In the end, I got 42 subframes of 1200 seconds and used 34 of them, totaling an hour and eight minutes of full integration time. After a first night of ruined work, I didn't give up and tried it again. But the final result showed me why this image is so iconic. There are so many objects and details that we can spend hours observing it and still it is not possible to believe that it was made in my backyard with modest equipment. I hope you enjoyed the images from this weekend. I wish you all clear skies and see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.